how did you get involved with uh, cryonics? Well, I've always uh, had an interest in uh, not dying. <laughs> and uh, and uh, <clears throat> I uh, developed also an interest in uh, nanotechnology, which is the, uh, a science that's, or a technology that's coming uh, in the future. Uh, and uh, this will make possible uh, technologies and, and uh, medical advances that we don't uh, we don't even foresee. So, uh, and it's justified uh, the cryonics idea, and uh, and then from at a meeting of this nanotechnology, uh, there were some people who uh, run a uh, cryonics organization in California, and they visited us and they told us about it. So, I got to know more about them uh, in real life, and so. Uh, I supported the idea and I joined it. So you expect to be thawed, uh, rather uh, frozen. Fro and yes, thawed. I've already arranged to have myself frozen. And Mr. Renau, you've also That's arranged correct. to have yourself That's frozen. Correct. Now, how much have you committed this, uh, yourself to spending on this project? Um, at this point, it costs me on a yearly basis about four hundred dollars a year. Uh, that covers my insurance coverage and the suspension. Maybe closer to six hundred. I actually don't don't think about it too much. At the, but the way it works is that uh, you take out a life insurance policy which covers a suspension arrangement mm -hmm. and that policy will range from 50000 to for a neural suspension mm -hmm. to 150000 for a f whole body suspension, which I've chosen. Uh, the advantage to that, the, the main parts of that cost are handling the legal and transportation and emergency cost of, of moving you from one place to another at the point of the animation, which is never a a simple operation, never an expected event. So Just if you died in Pepper, where would you be sent? Eventually to Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, uh -huh. the, uh, the way the uh, suspension arrangements work is when you are imminently uh, about to deanimate, which is a, the, the hopeful term for saying not quite dying, but dying by today's <coughs> techno technological standards. Mm -hmm. Uh, you would contact the staff in Alcor. They would fly a team out here and prepare and be ready to to suspend you. Uh, they do. Um, they lower your body temperature, and then transport it uh, back to uh, California at uh, just above freezing temperatures, and then they they carry out a suspension where cryo pr protectants replace your blood, and you're stirred stored permanently at liquid nitrogen temperatures. I don't see you wearing any like ID bracelet or beep, but what if you're in yeah. some far off place like Mongolia or Tibet? Yeah. What would happen? I mean, all, I, the, actually, all that insurance would be actually, a waste. <laughs> I have. Yeah, you're, you're right. There's, there's oh, a bracelet. Oh, there. my goodness. Dr. Greenstein is wearing a bracelet. Can I, can I read this? Yeah. Uh, in, case of, in case of death, see reverse for, bio, for biostasis protocol, for biostasis protocol, reward, and there's like an ID number. And you can read the other side, it, there's a, okay. Call now for, call now for instructions, push 50,000 IU heparin, U heparin IV, and, or actually instructions for cooling you down. You, you have to be cooled down yeah. to preserve you uh, <coughs> immediately. So. Um, it's important that wh wherever you are, someone find that. Now, what happens if they're really late in finding your body? Well, if there's an accident, if you have an auto accident or a plane crash or something like that, terrible like that, it may not be possible to do anything about it. So, mm -hmm. uh, best thing to do is to die under a controlled circumstances in a, in a hospital, so that uh, the people who have been on who've been put on standby can come and take care of you properly. Okay. Uh, Typically, that's a rare event. It's less than 4% of the people die unexpectedly. Yeah. Uh, is that amazing? There's 27 people still... Um, there's more than 27. There's about 27 in the Alcor at organization. Alcor. There's close to 50 people who are in suspended animation now. And you mentioned neural suspension. Some people only suspend, only freeze the brain. That's correct. And there are some cats that have been frozen, I understand. There are at least some dogs that have been frozen. And there was a hamster that was frozen, was there not, that was brought back to life? Uh, that I, I'm not familiar with. It's, it's, yeah. It sounds a little gruesome to, to freeze only the head, actually, not, yeah. the, not only the brain. Uh, the idea is that someday we'll be able to grow new, whole new bodies, 
and, uh, and so freezing the brain or head is really saving the identity of a person so that when they can just grow a whole new body, it'd be okay. How, how I mean, is this growing of a new body, is this cloning? Or? Yeah, I mean, that's the idea. You see, once we learn what the genetic code, we'll be able to produce arms, legs, anything you want uh, at, at will. So if you can just uh, take whatever genetic uh, makeup you have in, in, your, in your DNA and just uh, somehow turn on the right genes to grow, to heal, to grow a whole new body. Instead of just healing some skin, you can grow a whole new body. Well, it's how, not proved how yet. How far certainly. away are they from cracking this DNA code? Well, that's a good question because the, the Genome Project has uh, been uh, uh, off and running and they were planning to break uh, the, the, the generic human genome uh, by somewhere before the year 2010. But recently, I just read that there's a new computer chip, some silicon chip, that will uh, do gen DNA sequencing 100 times faster at one-tenth the cost. And so uh, the original $3 billion genome project is going to be only $300 million, hopefully, and it'll be done by uh, 1997, I think. But that doesn't mean that we'll, we'll know the whole thing then, because just knowing one generic genome for humanity, say, or you know, mankind, is not enough. You have to know the actual code, how you differ from me and how, uh, how, uh, uh, how we all differ, how we differ from dogs and cats and, and, and spinach and whatever, because we all have the, ba all life has the same basic coding, uh, but we don't know the code. So we'll have to do DNA sequencing for all the different species and, and, and characteristics of, uh, of life. And then we'll, once we know the code, then we'll be able to do things that we're, we're claiming. What about, well, <coughs> I don't understand what a genome is. Oh, okay. Our genes, our chromosomes, include the DNA molecule. And every cell has about three feet of uh, uh, three billion uh, bits, uh, pairs, they call them base pairs. 3 billion uh, combinations of, uh, of uh, molecules. That, those combinations define what we are, define all of life, actually. We don't know the code, but we are learning how, which genes to turn on for this and which genes to turn on for that to uh, solve some uh, uh, d diseases now. And so we're learning little bits at a time, but it's just starting. What kind of impact do you think this is going to have on society if, if it catches on? Well, there's a lot of things that it'll do. Right now, one of, the, one of the equations that everyone has in their mind is, I'm trading so much pleasure for 90 years of life, 80 years of life, 70 years of life. And if one looks at life as a degrading, uh, reducing property that each year is worse than the year before, it starts to look pointless at some, some point. But if one can start to say, well, it's possible that we will always, you know, life is extremely valuable and can be continued throughout history, it's hard to imagine that someone standing in a building somewhere far away can say, I want you to go die for this cause and I want you to go die for that cause, and that people would react to that positively and say, that makes sense to me. I don't think that makes sense in those, those kind of circumstances. So I can see some huge societal changes where people value the longer range rather than the shorter range and people's ideals. Uh, again, this is conjecture. They, they, they could go totally different. Now, $600 a year for a chance at uh, being a part of the uh, way distant future isn't really a, isn't really a terrible sacrifice. Uh, why do you think the idea was, uh, is publicized more, and why isn't it marketed and accepted more by the public? Uh, the real problem is, is people look at it, if, if someone, as a, for instance, if someone is going to go through an open heart surgery, no one thinks, it would be great to have an open heart surgery, but they do think well, it would be great to be alive after it, and that's what makes them go through it. This, this as, as a technology is, is built centered on the technology, and almost all the shows talk about the technology. So the, the images that people take home with them are images of being frozen upside down in a liquid nitrogen container, which is not appetizing to anybody. Uh, even, even the most staunch chronicist doesn't look forward to the experience. What they do look forward to is the experience beyond that. And I think when people begin to see it, I think what's going to happen before it becomes accepted is, is it'll become believable that technology will get to the point of reversing this kind of damage that the current process causes.